Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Williams Learning Lab. In this episode, we're going to be doing the Bohr model of oxygen. Let's do a quick review. When it comes to Bohr models, what we do is we draw a circle in the very center, and that's going to represent the nucleus. Well, inside the nucleus, we have a protons and neutrons, so we'll put P equals, and then the number of protons, N equals, and that number of neutrons. Electrons orbit the nucleus in something that we call orbitals or shells. So this first shell or orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Well, these electrons don't pair until they have to. Well, in this shell, they pair on the second one. Well, in the second electron shell or the second electron orbital, it can have a maximum of eight electrons. And these electrons, they do not pair until we get to the fifth electron. After that, they start to pair. In the third orbital, it can have a maximum of eight electrons. And in here, it doesn't pair until also the fifth electron. So one, two, three, four, and that would be the fifth electron. And then they would start pairing. In the last orbital that we'll do this for, which is the fourth orbital, we're gonna have a maximum of two. And there's a reason for that. Um, these will not pair in this orbital. And the reason why um, we stop right here is because if we add any more electrons, we're starting to do transition metals, and then transition metals do not behave the same way as this pattern has been so far. So we're only gonna be doing atoms from hydrogen all the way up to calcium. After that, um, some different things are happening. So let's go ahead and get down to the Bohr model of oxygen. We're going to look at our periodic table and we see we have an atomic number of 8. And then the atomic mass unit is going to be 16. All right, well, we should know that our atomic number, our smaller number here, tells us the number of protons. Well, it just so happens that it also tells us the number of electrons. To determine the number of neutrons, we're going to take the atomic mass unit, which we have 16, and then we're going to subtract the atomic number, which is 8. Well, 16 minus 8 just so happens to also be 8. How convenient. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our nucleus. We'll do that just by having a circle here. And inside of our nucleus, we're going to write the number of protons and neutrons. So I'm just going to do P equals 8. And then our neutrons also equals 8. The electrons orbit the nucleus in shells, or also called orbitals. So we're going to draw our innermost electron orbital first. and we need a total of eight electrons. Well, the first orbital can only hold two, so we're gonna put both of those right there. With that second electron, it pairs in that first orbital. Now we have six more electrons that we're gonna to need to put in our Bohr model. So we're gonna draw another orbital or another shell, okay? And we are not going to pair these electrons until we have to. And we don't have to until we have the fifth electron in that shell. So let's just go ahead. One, two, three, four. So now we have a total of six electrons so far. We still need two more. Here's the fifth electron in that shell. And here's the sixth electron in that shell. And so now we have the Bohr model of oxygen. Uh, you see right here we have two electrons that are unpaired, and that is why oxygen likes to have two bonds. If you found this video helpful, would you please consider like, commenting, and subscribing? And until next time, keep on learning.